One time where you gave out one of these awards was during a Vlad TV interview that you apparently showed up oh, at, yeah, and you decided yeah. that you wanted to give out one of these awards. You're about to give Tommy Sotomayor yeah, the yeah. case of the beats of his yeah, life. Can you yeah. break down what happened there, and, and was that the end of your relationship with Vlad? Um, Kind of, sort of. Kind of, sort of, because what Vlad did, and I, this is what I think, um, I was on the show, I was on Vlad's show, he interviewed me, the interview was cool, and then right after he got this guy, knowing that the guy was kind of going back and forth with me, and I didn't like that, I didn't like, you know, I, you know, don't put me into some beef and then try to use me to pump up a beef, that's what I think that he was yeah. doing, so I just went down there to see what was popping. Now, you know? now be real. Did Vlad give you the Addy? Like, did Vlad? No, no, like, no, 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 well, you already no, no. had the Addy because you already had the time address, before. though. Like, the no, time. Okay. No, no, no. I've been there before. And plus, um, Tommy was tweeting about it. Yeah. He oh. was like, yeah, hey, I'm in here, Vlad, everybody. You know, he was tweeting about it. During you know? the video, you can hear Vlad being like, did you tweet about the fact that you were going to be here? He's like, ah, gosh. Because, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because that was like the narrative of Vlad TV set this up so you guys could. Because you know, Tommy talk. started accusing Vlad right away as soon as Tariq ran in there. Right. And I, I went down there because Tommy kept threatening me. Like, he was going to kill me. Well, I'm going to see you. I'm going to kill you. And I'm like, well, damn, let me go get killed real quick. Yeah. You know? Definitely no. didn't seem like you wanted the smoke in that I interview. think that most people, like the Coons, don't even know like how big you are in person. Yeah, a lot of folks don't know. He's Until like, what, 6'4"? Because six, 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 Adam is 6'3". Six, six, three. Three. You're like 6'4", 6'5". Yeah. Yeah, yeah you 6'3"? Six, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm about 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. crazy, man. Yeah, a lot of folks, because y'all see me sitting down all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Now, yo, bro, like when you walked in, what was the fear in Tommy's eye? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he, was he, you he, like, <laughs> like, like, damn, man? I can't even do it to him, bro. Because, like, you know, like, yeah, because, yeah, I wasn't gonna sucker, because, yeah, because yeah. I wasn't gonna sucker punch him, because he would have been like, oh, I got sucker punch, you know. Mm -hmm. But more power to him, man. I think he's going through some things right now. And I hope, I hope he's doing all right, really, because mm -hmm. I don't like that. That was like almost a decade ago. So yeah, I hope that dude is doing all right, man. Uh, yeah. Folks that I've had beefs with, man, I'm not even tripping on that, like Umar and all these folks. I hope that they do good, man, because we got a bigger thing out here to deal with. You of know course. Now, like the thing with Tommy, do you feel like because when Tommy was at his height, yeah. It was definitely Coonan, right? You know, yeah. attacking black women, black men, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like the white supremacists used up Tommy and then spit him out? Yeah, yeah, what they do, they like to get a black person who's talking down on black society and then prop them up so they can hide their racism. They're like, hey, look at what this guy said about you folks. I didn't say it. This guy said it. Yeah. That type of thing. Candace Owens got the easiest job in the world. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's a young, pretty black girl, mm -hmm. and she's well-spoken, and mm -hmm. she's saying literally everything that the GOP wants Americans to believe. And, like, think about, like, I heard her talking the other day about how she's doing a documentary about how George Floyd's murder was justified. Can you imagine a white guy making that documentary? Right. I mean, it would be viewed as like pure KKK hate speech. She can kind of get away with it. And there's some significant percentage of black people who are probably going to fall for this. Yeah, but her job is to really lend her melanin to the white supremacists, to say the racist things about black society that white people can. And they have whole white think tanks that hire these people. Mm. There's a, a whole, that's Brandon, what's that Tatum, that police officer guy? He does the same thing. So they have a whole bunch of people on payroll to do the dirty work for them. Yo, that's crazy, man. Now, also, too, speak about your past, because I always call, like, Tariq Nasheed, like, you were, like, the godfather of, like, the whole, like, the man is fair giving yeah. game shit like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One, why do you feel like, I guess, like, that community kind of, like, erased you out of history? Mm. And do you feel like you like you get the credit for the manosphere in the red pill content? No, they still give me credit. They okay. give me credit because I wrote the first book that really blew that thing up. My book, The Art of Mackin, that I wrote and I wrote it in '99, came out in 2000. It was a huge seller, mm -hmm. so that kind of kicked that whole thing off. So people still kind of acknowledge that. Um, I just haven't written a relationship book in a long time, and you have a lot of people out here trying to feel their way around. Um, the closest person to come to um, the level of what I was doing was our good brother Kevin Samuels. Rest in peace to him, yeah. and he he followed me. And he read my stuff and he understood my work and he took it to another level because I started focusing more on the racial aspect of relationships mm -hmm. because um, talking about relationships is one thing, but relationships and race, they kind of go hand in hand because you're talking about getting with people and procreating with people. And then that lends into a, a racial situation. So I wanted to start focusing on race. W w yeah. Was there anything that was part of Kevin Samuel's platform that you disagreed with because you had countless people who were really trying to paint him as, you know, a black woman hater. Right. And then you have the whole other side who's basically saying he was answering a lot of these women's questions. His audience was largely women and he was really kind of telling a lot of people shit that they needed to hear, right? No, Kevin was telling uh, a lot of real truth and he was telling his truth and that's why people rock with it. Sometimes when you tell the truth, a lot of people want to get offended or pretend to be offended, but they will tune in and listen to the truth because they ultimately respect it. 
Mm. We've been taught in our society that you're supposed to sit here and kiss everybody's ass and you kiss women's asses and you're not supposed to tell them the truth and you're supposed to pander to them. And he just didn't do that. And especially as a black man, we're supposed to just kind of be contained. We're not supposed to wag the finger at anybody except other black men. So when we start pointing the finger at um, certain relationships in our community or we talk, we start talking about white supremacy, they look at that as us being out of bounds. Mm. So that's why I think Kevin got a lot of um, flack because he pointed the finger at people outside of black male society. Of course. Hey, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe. We just hit 200K. We're trying to get to 300K. Turn us up. Appreciate y'all. Let's go.